Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for this webinar on how to apply for a North Central Region Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program Farmer Rancher Grant. My name is Joan Benjamin, and I coordinate the North Central Region SARE Farmer Rancher Grant Program, and I am going to briefly tell you about the SARE program, and I'll go over a few grant writing basics. And then I'm going to give you specifics about the Farmer Rancher Grant and the online application process. So first, I wanted to just let you know what SARE is for those of you who don't know. And SARE stands for Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education. It's part of USDA, and it's funded through the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, or the NEFA program. All right, and so the purpose of the SARE program, which is a national program, is to provide grants and outreach to advance sustainable agriculture innovations to the whole of American agriculture. And let's go to the next slide. This is a different kind of a grant program because it is decentralized. There's four regions, the North Central, Northeast, South, and West. And each of those is guided by a volunteer administrative council. And those administrative councils are made up of farmers and ranchers and researchers, educators, um, people from state and federal agencies, business people. Uh, it's a grassroots kind of program, which it means that each of the four regions makes their own funding decisions and they decide which grants they're going to offer. The Farmer Rancher Grant is reviewed by a committee of about 30 farmers and ranchers who represent all 12 states in our region. So when you write a grant to, for uh, the Farmer Rancher Grant Program, that's who you're addressing, farmers and ranchers from the North Central region. They're interested in practical proposals and accurate budgets. And also just wanna mention that we have a strong commitment to diversity and proposals that involve farmers and ranchers or youth from historically underserved populations are encouraged. And this is the SARE model. As I mentioned, there's four different regions. Each has their own administrative council that runs it. So in the North Central region, the 12 states that make up our region are Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, Ohio, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. We have a national SARE outreach group and they produce information to share the results from grant projects with farmers, ranchers, educators, consumers, and others who are interested in sustainable agriculture. And so they put out a whole wide variety of publications from books to bulletins, uh, YouTube videos, other online resources, and all of these are available to you free for download. Or if you want to purchase some of them, like a book, you can actually download it if you want to, or you could uh, purchase it for the, a small price. We have uh, topic rooms on topics like high tunnels or small ruminants. So um, please be sure to check out our national website and look over some of these resources that are available to you. These are all on the National SARE website at www.sare.org. We also ask you to uh, take a look at the project reports tab on our North Central SARE website, which is northcentral.sare.org. And there you can see reports from projects in our region. And it's always a good idea to review projects that are similar to the ones you're thinking about or, or on a similar topic so you can build on what's already been done and not kind of re, re, uh, reinvent the wheel. And that makes your grant proposal more competitive. And in addition to looking at resources that SARE has, be sure to also look at resources outside of SARE on the topic that you are writing a grant proposal on so that you have all the information available when you write your grant proposal. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is the SARE model. SARE focuses on sustainable agriculture, and we define that as ecologically sound, economically viable, and socially responsible. So when you write a proposal, you'll have a question in there asking you how you are addressing these three areas of sustainable agriculture. And we want you to discuss all three parts, even if your proposal just focuses primarily on one of those parts. So for all of the, our SARE grants, and there are six different grant programs that we offer in the North Central region, farmers and ranchers are major stakeholders in all of them. So you... Farmers and ranchers play a huge role in directing our work. 
So people who apply for farmer rancher grants have to identify specific problems and potential solutions to those problems that they're trying to solve. This grant program is for sustainable agriculture research or education and demonstration projects. It's not for startup costs or everyday farming expenses, except those expenses that are directly related to your project. So to give you an example, if you were doing a livestock feed study, maybe you were comparing different types of feed for livestock, the feed that you needed for the livestock proposed project could be included in your budget, but only for the animals that are involved in the project. If you do involve livestock in your project, we have a livestock care form we ask you to fill out that helps us uh, evaluate and see that there's reasonable animal care being carried out. This shows you just a few of the topics in the SARE portfolio. So you can see that there's a very wide range of topics that SARE grants have covered in the Farmer Rancher Grant Program. We've given out 1,400 of these farmer rancher grants since the program started in 1992, and that's over $10.5 million. So in addition to what you see here, there's topics like agroecology, agroforestry, beneficial insects, um, holistic farming and ranching, poultry, small-scale livestock, water quality improvement. So it's just wide open to whatever issues farmers, farmers and ranchers are facing. And here's a little bit about the Farmer Rancher Grant Program. So these are funds that go directly to farmers and ranchers. It's to solve a problem on the farm or ranch using sustainable agriculture practices. And then we ask you to share that information with others so, so they can benefit as well. There's two options. You can apply as an individual for up to $15,000 and you can apply as a team of two or more farmers from separate operations who are working together and that teams can apply for up to $30,000. We do encourage you to work with others like nonprofit organizations or universities because often they can help you with outreach or setting up a design for your project and uh, that can be a benefit. We fund about 40 of these projects per year and I coordinate the program. So if you have any questions about it or specific questions about your proposal, you can feel free to contact me. If you're applying to this program, you might be just starting the, your transition to sustainable agriculture, or you may have been doing it for a long time and just want to make additional changes. That's fine. Either way, the purpose of these grants is to help reduce the risk of trying out new ideas. You do not need matching funds, and we do not ask you about matching funds. So we are not going to ask you about your contribution, and we don't want you to put your contribution in the budget. If we did that, we would then have to follow up and make sure that you were actually meeting those matches and we don't want to do that or have the people to do that. So we don't ask anything about matching funds. Um, if you want to let reviewers know that you are contributing, if your project looks like, wow, it's gonna cost a lot more than what you're asking in the budget in the narrative, you can explain that you have other funds. Don't put the specific amount, but say that you have funds to cover the additional expenses that aren't part of the... All right, so um, as I mentioned, I coordinate the Farmer Rancher Grant Program for the North Central Region. I'm located at Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. Most of our staff is located at the University of Minnesota in St. Paul, Minnesota. And that is because the University of Minnesota is the NCR SARE host institution. So that's where all the paperwork comes from when you, if you, if you're funded. I'm going to go over the grant writing basics for you, just 10 quick tips that are good for this grant as well as for other grants. And the first thing is determine if this is the right grant for you. Make sure that your idea fits the priorities of this particular program, because if it doesn't, it's not going to get funded and it is just going to be a waste of your time. If you have questions about if it's a good fit, feel call, free to call the grant coordinator, in this case, me, to ask about that. We want you to um, be sure to understand the review process so you and the criteria for evaluating your proposal so you know where to put the most effort out. And the way you figure that out is by reading the call for proposals. And that has all the directions in it and what you need. So um, you need to develop clear goals and we also, uh, or objectives, 
and then think about, you know, how exactly are you going to solve this problem? Make your goals simple and clear so reviewers know what exactly your goal is as they read your application and how you're going to read it. So you want to use simple writing and plain terms. You don't want reviewers having to try and figure out what you're talking about because that reduces your chance of being funded. So I have a question, are letters of support from partners acceptable? I'm thinking of the person or organization that might be considered a match if a match were allowed. If the person is receiving funds from the grant, no, do not use them for your letter of support. If they are not receiving funds, you can use them as, a, as one of your letters of support. But if they're receiving funds, that looks like a conflict of interest. So um, if they're included in the budget, then don't use them for your support letter. All right. So um, the other thing you want to think about is what you can accomplish during the grant time period, which is 23 months. You have up to 23 months to finish this project. And we know some of your projects are much more long-term than that. So think about what can you actually accomplish during the 23 months and what can you document and measure during that time period? Don't promise more than you can deliver and um, make it reasonable so that it's, it's something that you can actually accomplish within those 23 months. Uh, when you're Thinking about your project, think about the details ahead of time. So if you're doing a research project, for instance, and you're trying to put an experimental design together, make sure that the design you come up with is actually going to come up with results that show if this is going to work or not, what you're, what you're experimenting with. If you need help on a research design, maybe bring in a cooperator who can help you, maybe someone from Extension. Or we also have a SARE bulletin, how to conduct research on your farm or ranch, and that might be a good resource for you. So we are going to ask you how you're going to measure your results in the grant proposal. So as I mentioned, be sure what you're measuring is actually going to tell you if you've accomplished your objectives. So for instance, that might be crop yield, it might be reduced erosion, it might be, um, you know, uh, more tomatoes, uh, might be getting a, an increased market share for a cooperative or a community involvement increase, but just make sure whatever you measure that it's going to give you the results you need to tell, okay, did this work or not? And don't worry if it didn't work, because that's the point of these grants. We're trying to find out if things work or not, and then share that information with others. So if it doesn't work out the way you think, and it often doesn't, that's okay. As long as you learn something and are able to share that information with others, we consider it a success. Think about the timing. Let renew reviewers know when you're going to be doing things so they can get a good sense of, are you, or have you thought this through? Do you have time to accomplish all of the things you say you're going to do? And then involve other people if that works for your particular grant. So sometimes you need someone who can complement your skills, maybe somebody who is really good with outreach, who can help you put on field days or put on a webinar or whatever types of outreach you're planning to work with. So develop a clear outreach plan. We're going to ask you about that. And it's good to have more than one method of outreach. So maybe it's a field day, maybe it's a workshop or a publication or social media but if you use more than one method of outreach, that really helps you broaden the number of people who you reach. And that is a big goal of these grants is to get this information out to other farmers and ranchers so they can benefit from it as well. Develop a realistic budget. As I mentioned, the reviewers are farmers and ranchers and they, they are practical people. They want to see that you've done some research and you can look up um, online, you can make phone calls to suppliers to try and get realistic figures to include in your budget. And we are also going to ask you for a justification for each budget item. And I'll go into that later. But what that means is how did you come up with that number? So if you say you're going to buy a hundred plants, then for the justification, you would say a hundred plants times $10 per plant is how you came up with that budget item and that's how um, that's the justification for it how show the math and then we ask you to follow the directions and this was why it's important to read the call for proposals before you get started because it has directions as well as tips for filling out the grant application 
and you can be disqualified if you don't answer all the questions or or follow the format or the word count. But the, usually the system will cut you off on the word count so that you can't go over. Whether you're funded or not, you will receive reviewer comments back. And those are really valuable to help you for future grant applications. Not all good applications get funded because we simply don't have the funds. Let's go to the next slide, please. But you can learn from it and make a stronger proposal the next time that might get funded. If you need help with your grant proposal, you can contact me or you can contact your state SAIR coordinator. Each state in our region has at least one state SAIR coordinator. And if you go to our webpage, which is northcentral.sair.org, you'll see where this red arrow is pointing. It says SARE in your state. And when you click on that, it'll list all the states in our region. And when you click on that, it will show you who the state coordinators are as well as their contact information so you can speak with them. Another option for getting grant writing help is the grant advising program of the Michael Fields Agricultural Institute. And Ren Almitra, who is the grants advisor, is on this call. And Ren, I'm gonna ask you to Go ahead and um, tell a little bit more about this program and the help that you can offer, please. Sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, as Joan said, my name is Renal Mitra. I'm a grant consultant and wear many hats under that kind of umbrella title. So one of my roles is to work with um, farmers or farmer serving organizations, um, assisting with grant processes, grant reviews. Uh, I don't do any writing for you all, but I can certainly help talk through um, proposals uh, and ideas. And then I can, you know, do draft reviews and some some editing suggestions as well. So um, as Joan said, we kind of, uh, well, we've been tag teaming between um, Sarah's staff and, and my services. So feel free to reach out to me first or your state court coordinator first and they might bounce you to me and um, we'll uh, we'll work with you as, as we can. Thank you, Ren. And you can see Ren's contact information here. It's also included in the call for proposals. And um, it's, you know, the more help you get, the better as you're developing your proposal and the more eyes on it, the better as, as well. Because when other people look at your grant proposal, if they have questions, those are likely questions that reviewers might have. This is when you're ready to get into the system and you want to start looking at some of the information. If you go to our webpage, northcentral.sare.org, you'll see a list of open grant programs under this heading, our grant programs. And as you scroll down, you'll see the Farmer Rancher Grant Program is open right now. The proposals are due on December 7th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Central Time. And you see where the red arrow is pointing. You can click on Learn More or Apply Now. So what you'd want to do is click on learn more first so you can look at the call for proposals and get all the information before you apply. So when you click on learn more, you'll see this page that gives you information about the Farmer Rancher Grant Program, including frequently asked questions that might be helpful to you to see those answers. Um, on the right-hand side where you see the red arrow there, it, you can download the call for proposals in as a Word document or as a PDF. Um, what So this call for proposals, this is just grant terminology, meaning we're asking for applications and you can turn them in and here's the directions for doing that. So look through all of this first, make sure you use the most current call for proposals and that's what we post online if you have one from a previous year don't use it because there are typically changes each year to the call for proposals we have an online system that we ask you to use but if you aren't able to use it we do allow you to turn in your proposal via email and we will enter it for you but if at all possible try and use the online system yourself because that's how we communicate best with you by sending you emails through that system if we have questions or, or anything that we need to ask you. If you are if you have trouble um, accessing things, let us know. We can print hard copies and send them to you. We can email you a copy as well. If you do end up trying to turn in your proposal by um, email or by mail, we will accept a hard copy if you are not able to use the online system make sure that you turn those in by the proposal due date. So if you're mailing it, for instance, or emailing it, 
It also has to be in our office by December 7th at 4 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you allow enough time for it to get there by mail or if you're sending an email. We do not accept faxes because they get blurry and they're too hard to read. And when you click on download the call for proposals, this is what you see. This is the actual call for proposals, which is a number of pages of instructions and the application that you'll see in the online system. Where the red arrow is pointing is the link that will take you to where you can uh, start your application or you can click on apply the apply now button. All right, so when you click on apply now, this is what you'll see. And you have two options. The, the SARE grant management system comes up and you can, if you have never been in the system before, you'll need to start by creating an account where you see that lower arrow on the left. Or if you go into the system and click on apply now, you'll see what's in the box on the right. So they're just slightly different, and but both of them have a create an account button that you can click on and you can enter the uh, system through either of those options. If you have already had a SARE grant before, then um, you can just log in using the, the login information that you've had previously. All right, and now I'm going to guide you through this system so you can see how it works. One, and we'll go to the next slide. But one thing I want to mention, if you're having any difficulties at all, give one of us a call or email because we use this system every day and it's very familiar to us. I know it's not at all familiar to many of you who have never seen it before. We can show you how to do something very quickly and don't want you to have to spend a lot of time trying to figure something out if it's something that we can show you. So when you click on that um, create an account, it's going to ask you for information like your name, address, email. The email is important because that's how we communicate with you. So be sure to use an email that you check you know, that you're going to be looking at. So, and also uh, sometimes from our SARE system, these do go into a junk file. Uh, so be sure to check that if you think that that's a possibility. So when you fill out all these, uh, the information here and the registration, then at the bottom, bottom left-hand corner, there's a register button and you can click on that to, in order to register and then you can get started. Uh, as part of this, we also ask you for demographic information, and this is because we are trying to have an ethic of openness and inclusiveness and diversity in all the North Central Region SARE programs and policies and procedures. And so help, to help monitor how we're doing on this, we, actually, we do collect demographic information, and we appreciate your help uh, adding that. The demographic information is not linked to your proposal. And if you do not want to answer the questions, you, you have to go through and answer each question, but each question has the option that you prefer to not answer. So you can, you know, you have to um, go through all the questions, but you can prefer not to answer if that's your preference. So once you've completed all this information and you've logged into the system, you click on start a new grant proposal. And then you'll see what's available. So it will show you all the grants that are open in all the regions. On the left-hand side where it says apply for a grant, you will click on the North Central Region because that's the one that we're, you're looking to apply to. And then you will see this box on the right pop up and you want to click the North Central Farmer Rancher Grant. That's the one you're applying for and click on begin a new proposal. When that opens up, you're going to see that the first couple of items it asks for say missing. So it'll say missing title and missing description. And in order to fill those out, you click on the edit button. So here on the top left, you'll say it's missing a title. So you'll click on edit title, type in your title, and then click on save. Um, you are limited on this to 150 characters or less, including spaces. That's about 25 words. The system will not let you go beyond that. So, uh, and, and don't worry too much if you don't have your title in mind right off the bat, you can just, you know, put a title for the time being, and then um, you can save it. And then later when you want to change it, you just click on edit title again, go in, make it, um, fix it the way you want it to be and edit it, and then click on save again to save your new title. All right, then after that, you're gonna uh, fill in the missing description. This is just a brief description. 
Uh, you have 300 characters for this description, but I believe we have a question. So it says, uh, who applies if a team of farmers is applying for the grant? So if a team is applying, one of you has to be the coordinator. And to be the coordinator, that means that you are the contact person for us. So it's this is also the person, if there is any taxes involved, that is the person who the tax burden will be on. So you want to make sure and discuss that with your team so you're aware of how that is going to work. But the team member is the one who is, um, the team coordinator is the one who is going to get all the communications from North Central Region SARE. Okay, so when we go back to this, um, after you've edited your, after you've uh, saved your title, you see the title is shown up above and you can edit title if you want to change it. Below that, then you click on um, edit project description. You have 300 characters for a, a brief project description. Um, this is about um, 300 characters, including spaces. That's about 45 words. And so what we ask you in these is, is just to put something so that if a reviewer glanced at this or a person who was interested in your project glanced at this, they could say, okay, this is what this project is about. Or if someone was doing a web search, they would understand what your project was about and could find it. And then again, you'll, you'll click on save in order to um, save your work. I have a question. Do grants also apply for beginning military veteran farmers Yes, these are these uh, grants are open to beginning farmers, but you'll just need to make sure that you emphasize, you know, why you have the experience to fill, to uh, complete the project that you're proposing. And then uh, we have another question: If I'm the team coordinator working with multiple farmers on a project, do I need to demonstrate a history of farming, i.e., file a Schedule F in order to be eligible to apply? No, you do not. For this grant program, the way we define farmer is someone who um, someone who raises crops or livestock, especially as a business. That's it. It's a it's a dictionary definition. We don't ask you about your taxes. You don't have to own land. You don't have to um, earn a certain amount of money. We just simply say someone who raises crops or livestock, especially as a business. And if you feel that you qualify through that definition, you are considered a farmer or rancher through this program. In order to complete your proposal, you'll see on the left-hand side here that there are several items with red asterisks next to them. And those mean that those items are not yet completed. You start with general information. So when you click on information, you'll see what's on the next slide. There'll be a series of questions and an edit button next to each one. So you'll click on the edit button, answer the question and click save. So every time you complete an answer, be sure to click on save and before you move to the next one to save your work. And with all of these, you can go back in and edit if you need to make a change. On um, some questions like this question about state, you may see a uh, under the answer where it says, on the right hand lower corner here where the red arrow is, it says select one. And when you click on that, it will list all the states in our region and you can pick one. So sometimes there's a drop down list like that that you can choose from. Um, someone asks if cover crop projects can apply. Yes, certainly you can apply to do a cover crop project. So after you have completed and saved uh, an answer, you'll see a green check mark by it. And that means that particular answer is completed. If there isn't a green check mark, you either didn't save or something, um, and, and you may need to go back in uh, and save it to get the green check mark so you know that that one is completed. Then go through and just keep um, answering all the questions in this section. All right, so if you are completing a team grant, you need to include the contact information for your team members and you need to do that by clicking on this add a cooperator budget. We need their contact information and email as well because everyone who's added as a cooperator and by cooperator, we just mean the farmer ranchers who are part of your team. So if it's a team of two, there's just the two of you. If, if you have a team that includes three farmers or ranchers, you can include three but this is what we're looking for here is these cooperators um, as a cooperator. And then when you open that up, it will have all, you know, a bunch of the same questions as you filled out when you registered the name, address, 
email. And it's important that you put their email in because we are going to send them an email asking them to confirm their participation in your grant project. If they, And uh, then let's go on. If they don't have an email, then we will ask you to um, get a, uh, have them write up a brief paragraph explaining their role in the project. And you can uh, make a PDF file of that and add it to your, um, add it to your proposal. Joan, it's Marie. Yes. There are a couple questions in the chat, if you can scroll up. I think you okay. may have that address. I yet. see. All right. Are there any recommendations for getting letters of support as a beginning farmer? Uh, yes, it's good to go uh, to an, an extension educator might be able to help you or a nonprofit organization, farm organization. If you're working with any of those, you might want to go to your natural resource conservation service. Um, just depending on where you are and what kind of project you have, those kinds of um, groups might be able to help you. In some states, maybe your Department of Agriculture would have someone who could write a letter for you, but it, it somewhat depends on your topic. If there is someone in the, what we're asking for in these letters is for you to say, uh, have them say why this project would be of benefit to the community. So maybe there's a community member who can explain why this would be really important to them or another farmer who might say, you know, this is a huge problem in our area. So this is why we're interested in this research and why this project would be of benefit. Another question is, can a nonprofit that leases land to a group of farmers and provides education and training to them as they grow their business apply on the behalf of the group? We may need to talk about that separately. In general, nonprofits are encouraged to apply to the partnership grant program instead of the farmer rancher grant program, but there is one exception, and that is for nonprofits that are actively farming. So if there is a farmer who's part of your organization, they can apply. So you have to be a farmer or rancher to apply. If you are a nonprofit, the if you're funded, then the um contract could run through your organization, but you have to have a farmer rancher who applies and who is the contact person. All right, so let's go on to the next slide. So you've got your team members in, you've got all their contact information in and here. This just shows how you'll be adding information for the contact information for your team members, fill in the email so we can contact them and make sure they are, are understanding their role in the project. Okay, um, and once you've answered those questions, and completed that section, then you can click on proposal overview at where this left arrow is pointing. And that will take you back so you can see what still needs to complete it or be completed. Or you can go to click where the arrow on the right is pointing and just go on to next section. You see, you also have the options always of clicking on view draft to see a draft of what you've come up with so far. And you can also click on the call for proposals again if you want to review something uh, that, that you had a question about. All right, if you return to the proposal overview, you're going to see this page that's um, at the bottom where there's a red asterisk in front of grant proposal because that isn't filled out yet. And then I've just copied that and made an insert so you can see that there's four sections yet to fill out. Each of those has a red asterisk by it, but the general information section no longer has a red asterisk by it because you've completed all of that. So click on the next section, which is grant proposal. And this is where all of the, the uh, main questions about your proposal are. Some questions, it's good to have a table to answer them. It might make it easier and you can fit in more information than you could if you were um, just using uh, uh, straight text. So if you want to add a table, click on then answer, where it says answer, click on edit, and that opens up this answer box that um, you can see on the right. And up, up above it, you'll see the table icon where the arrow is pointing. That allows you to create a table in, the, in, in your answer box. So you'll take your computer mouse and highlight however many rows and columns you are, want. In this case, there's three rows and three columns and then um, left click on your mouse and it will insert that blank table into your answer and you can fill it in. Or you also have the option of creating a table separately and you can copy and paste it into the answer box. 
Um, but sometimes you lose the formatting when you do that. So if you can just create a table in the in the um, answer box itself, that helps. Once you have your table created, as you see in this little insert box, below it, there's a bunch of icons and those allow you to add rows or delete rows. And so you can work with the table if you need to once it's created. But uh, then when you type in your information, go ahead and click on save to save that. And let's go on to the next one. And this may seem confusing when I'm presenting all of this to you at once, but um, as you go through it, hopefully it won't be as confusing. And if you have any questions, like I said, be sure to contact us and we'd be glad to walk you through it. For this solution and objective questions where it asks you, what's the solution to the problem that you're trying to solve and what are your objectives? you have the option of adding a drawing or image. And I recommend that you do this. You don't have to do it, but it's very helpful and the reviewers like it. So this could be a drawing or a photo that shows the plot layout that you're gonna use for a crop trial or demonstration. It could be the design for a new piece of equipment that you're wanting to build. If you're doing an education project, it might be a sample page from the curriculum that you're trying to develop or some other aspect of your project. You're limited to one page, single-sided, but you do have the option of adding this drawing, optional drawing or image into this solution and objective question. In order to do that, you would click on this add media button where the arrow is pointing that is above the answer box. And then let's go on to the next page, the next slide, and you'll see what appears when you click on Add Media. Then you have, uh, you can click on Select Files. That allows you to select a file from your computer and you can insert it into the answer box by clicking on Insert Into Post. Put a caption so that you know what this is showing. Um, and then you can find it later because in addition to putting it into your proposal, it will put it into this media library, which you see where it says um, where the circle is on the left hand side of the page, so that if you need to make changes to it later, you can go in and, and uh, if maybe you erased it by mistake, you can go into the media library and, and uh, add it to your project again. Um, when you click on it, the image is going to be embedded into your proposal. So let's go to the next slide. And when you click on insert into post, and you'll see what this looks like. So this is a plot map. So the image that you selected appears here, and you can see it where the red arrow is pointing. That's how it would look in your answer box. It's showing the layout for these three uh, trial plantings that, that someone is setting up for a vegetable trial. If you um, attach a PDF file, it will instead appear as a link. And that if you look at the blue area, blue arrow where it says plot map, then it'll appear as a link instead of actually the picture. And either way is okay. So after you've completed that grant proposal section, now you see where the circle areas are. There's no asterisks by general information or grant proposal. Those are completed. You can go on to the next section, which is the livestock care plan. Also, as always, you can go to the top and click on View Draft. That will open a new window for you, and you can look at and see what you've accomplished so far and if it's set up the way you want it to. And you can just close that window out to go back to um, work in your proposal. Even if your project does not involve livestock, you need to open this section and answer the first question, which is, does this project involve livestock? If it doesn't, just say no and click save and you're done. If it does involve livestock, then click on yes and answer the questions that you'll see there and click on save. For the purposes of farmer rancher grants, livestock are vertebrate animals only. So those with a backbone or a spinal column like cows and sheep and things. If you're working with insects, bees or shrimp, things that do not have a backbone, they are not considered livestock for this farmer rancher grant. All right. So once you've completed that and saved it, you'll go on to the letter of support. Okay. So in this section, the letter of support is something that you do have to attach to the proposal. 
you must have one letter of support from someone in the community explaining why this project would be of benefit to the community. You can have up to two letters, but no more than two letters. If you add more than two, it's up to us to erase some. And so then um, you don't know if we're going to pick the ones you want or not. So don't put more than two. You must have one, but you can have up to two. In order to add a letter of support, you need to save it as a PDF file, and then you will attach it just as you attached the optional um, uh, image or or um, photo it previously by clicking on Add Media. And then select file, selecting the file. And then you'll see that it appears as in this right box, right hand box where it was labeled letter of support one and it's there, but until you click on save, it won't add it. So again, save, save, save. Whenever you see a save button, make sure you click the save button to save your work. All right. Um, and the, there is a question, what is the definition of community for purposes of this proposal? And we don't have a formal definition. So uh, whatever your particular community is, you know, maybe you're an urban farmer and so it's your urban farming community. Maybe you're a rural farmer and it's your rural community. But sometimes people can go much further de depending on what the project is about. Sometimes people work with people from other states because their project covers a, a broader area. Um, so it's just depending on what community applies to your particular topic. Hopefully that answered your question, but if you have any question about that, you can contact me separately to ask about it. So, and, and when you go into this and where it asks you about the letter of support, you know, maybe somebody uh, is working on a project where they're trying to do some kind of a marketing um, effort with local groceries. So maybe the grocery manager would be the person who would write the letter of support for you. So it just really depends on what kind of project you have and what um, what you think is gonna make the biggest impression on the reviewers as far as showing that there is support for this effort that you're making. And this is the last section, the budget and justification. And it's an important section um, because this is where you're showing what how much money you're asking for in the grant proposal. And whatever you ask for up to the limit is all that you can receive. So make sure you're asking for enough. So if it's an individual project that's up to $15,000 and if it's a team project that's up to 30. So the way that you answer this is you click on the, um, the budget section and then be sure first to read the budget instructions in the call for proposals and then you're gonna click on add a budget item, like you see in the bottom right-hand corner. You have, we ask you to fill in the budget category, a description and the details or justification of how you came up with the amount and the amount that you're asking for for each item. So this is a detailed budget. When you click on category, there's a drop-down menu and you'll see the the different categories that you can choose from here where the red arrow is pointing. So you can, it could be travel, personnel, other direct costs, materials and supplies, or this top category that's a long one. It's equipment, permanent fencing, perennial seeds and plants, or livestock. And for all of those items, only 50% of the cost can be charged to the grant. The way that we define equipment is something that costs $5,000 or more and has a useful life of more than one year. If it's under $5,000, it does not meet the equipment definition and it goes under materials and supplies instead and that 50% rule does not apply. If you have questions about it, just let me know and I can look at if the specifics of what you want to um, include and we can see if it's equipment or not. Okay, uh, let, and then after you, you've filled in all these sections, then um, you will click on save, but let's go to the next page and you can see what it looks like as you fill this in. So here, here this is, um, for this particular example, the category is equipment, permanent fencing, perennial seeds and plants or livestock. And that's because 
this person is asking to get funding for perennial plants, in this case, 27 potted marshmallow plants for their trial. So the description says 27 potted marshmallow plants, and you could put, you know, one quart pots or whatever to give the reviewers a good idea of what, what it is that you're asking for. Under the details and justification, it gives the exact figures that you have to work with that you've found from your research on what this is going to cost. So 27 plants at $15.99 per plant equals $431.70. And then plus they added shipping and all that um, rounded it to $513. But because this is a perennial plant and only 50% of the cost is allowed, they have to say 50% of $513. So $256.50 rounded to $257 can be the amount that you include as the amount you're asking for the grant to pay for. And the reason we ask you to round these figures, the system only accepts whole numbers. So you will have to round your figures in order to put them into this budget. When you've completed a budget item, it will look like this section that you see at the bottom. So it's got the description, category, and amount listed and shows what you put there. And below it, it shows the justification. And since only one item has been entered in the budget so far, it'll show the total as the $257. But as you keep adding items, it will keep out, it'll add the total up for you so you can see if, you, if you're going over or not. So this next slide shows you a sample budget. This is part of a sample budget. So it shows you that um, plants that were purchased, a dehydrator that was needed, a root digger attachment, a use of a commercial kitchen, a uh, field day, lunch. And one thing I'll mention, if you're including, uh, if you have a field day and you're wanting to have a lunch for people on the farm, you need to have activities before and after the lunch because uh, otherwise it isn't accepted. Because if, if it ends with lunch, then the um, accounting people will say, well, it, the day was over. Th there was no more programming. Um, there was no continuity of program so um, that you couldn't include the lunch. So if you're including a meal like this, be sure that you have activities before and after the meal. Um, you'll see there's labor included in there and we want farmers and ranchers to, if, if you're paying for your time to carry out this project, um, we recommend at least $25 an hour as wages because we want you to have fair wages as part of this um, and, and show that we value your work. So uh, you can see at the bottom, this one is totaled up all the items that you've entered and it's showing $6,137. And then this person uh, probably still had more items that they needed to add. When you're done, um, and have saved it, click on proposal overview and go to the beginning again and see what you still, if you still have anything to complete. All right, so then it takes you to this page when you can submit your proposal because all of your sections are completed and there's no asterisks anymore by any of the sections. Um, I really recommend that you click on view draft first and go over the whole thing. Make sure that your answers make sense. Make sure that they make sense to someone who might be reading the proposal. When you click on view draft, it gives you a link so that you can share your proposal with others. So if you want someone else to look at it, either your team members or someone that you just want to read it for you, like Ren Elmitra, for example, then you can um, give, the, give them that link and they can view your draft. Um, once you've looked at the draft, checked your budget figures, looked at your spelling, make sure everything looks the way you want it to, and that it's easy for reviewers to understand, then you can click on submit proposal on the upper, uh, where you see the right hand um, arrow in the upper right corner. When you click on that, you'll see another um, submit proposal uh, button show up and that's just to confirm okay you really want to submit this so then you click on that second submit proposal and you'll see what comes up next you'll get an email that sends that says you have successfully submitted your proposal and then if you go back into your proposal 
you'll see this status line there that says when you submitted it and the time you submitted it. If you suddenly say, oh no, I forgot a budgeted item, um, then you can click on the unsubmit button, unsubmit proposal button at the top where the arrow is pointing, go back in, make a change, save, and then be sure to submit again before the grant deadline, because if you don't submit, then it's not there for us to look at. All right, let's go to the last slide and um, take any more questions that you have. So here's my contact information if you need to get in touch with me. So uh, we have somebody asking about the equipment. Is it rented or leased equipment? Um, if you rent or lease equipment, you don't, it, then that 50% rule doesn't apply. It's only to purchased equipment that you're purchasing for the project. But if you rent or lease it, then that 50% rule does not apply. The full amount can be included up to um, the limit of the grant. Good luck to everybody. And if you have more questions about your specific proposal, feel free to contact me or your SARE state coordinator or Ren Almitra with the Michael Fields Institute.